Hey, it's Frank here with 4D Honeybee, and I'm just in the process of requeening my queenless hive. Now the hive is laying drones, or it's uh, it has worker bees laying drones, so I went out and acquired this new queen. She's a nice little thing. She's got a couple of attendants in there with her. And you'll see her in a sec here. She's marked yellow. You can just see her there. Hopefully she'll come out. It looks like they're working on the uh, candy. They're working on getting through the candy. But there's my yellow marked queen right there. Now the way I'm going to try to install her is, uh, is I'm going to use a, a cage method, an open cage method. So basically I'm taking these, uh, these spools over here of one quarter inch, um, what's it called? Uh, one quarter inch steel mesh. And one quarter inch is too wide. They're going to be able to get through that one quarter inch. So I'm going to try and double it up so that I make it less than a quarter inch, more like an eighth of an inch. And um, I'm going to make about a four by four cage that I'm going to release the queen into, set it into a frame with some honey and some open comb so that um, so that she can spend a few days there getting used to it and I'll spend a few days getting used to her and hopefully she'll lay in there and they'll realize that she's a lot better than the laying worker bee that they've got. So that's the plan. I'm going to make it up and I'm going to install it and thanks for joining me to do it. This is my first time. Okay, so here's my release cage. It's kind of a ghetto version of what a real release cage should be because the hardware store only had this one quarter inch wire, steel wire mesh and of course that's too wide, the bees can get through that. So I lined it with a uh, much smaller aluminum mesh. So that should keep the bees out. So I'm going to take this and uh, put my queen box in it. Release it, open up this button right here. And release her and embed this wire cage into a frame that has um, hopefully some honey and some empty space for her to lay. I'll give it a few days, if not a week, and hopefully the bees will get used to her and realize that uh, this queen is a better layer than the, um, than the queen they think they have in there, which is a drone. And uh, if that doesn't work, that's pretty much me out of options as far as recreening. I'll, I will have to split this hive into my two stronger hives. So let's see how it works. Okay, so what I'm going to do is... Uh, Open up this box and look for the ideal frame to put the queen in. And um, while I'm doing that in one brood box, I'm going to take the other brood box and I'm going to sit the queen down on top of it and just see what happens. See if they are uh, if they're dead set against the queen and trying to ball her up and kill her, or seeing if they welcome her with open wings. And again, that might just give me an indication as to how successful the transplant may or may not be. Never done this before, so you're learning as I'm learning. And all the while I'm gonna look for, um, look for a queen as well, but I don't, I'm pretty sure there isn't a queen in here. Um, so one reason why I've chosen this method, the cage method, as opposed to shaking the bees off somewhere and hoping the, the, uh, the laying, the laying um, worker doesn't come back is that there are a lot of bees in this hive and I want to keep it that way. If this transplant is not successful, then the next step I'm going to do is just sh um, split the hives into, or the hive into my two healthy hives on either side. So. That's why I don't want to uh, shake all the bees away because I don't want to lose a great number of bees. The hive is very strong, but it's queenless. Considering it's queenless, look at how calm these guys are. Um, so, first step, I'm going to remove this upper brood box. Second step will be just to set the queen hot over here in a little corner and see what happens. Now I'm going to look for the right frame to set her on. I'm going to set her in the bottom of this brood box here, in this brood box here, not the bottom, the top of this bottom brood box. And the way I hope to do it is I hope to find one of these middle frames to have um, 
honey on the sides, like on the corners, and then empty, empty uh, cells for brood. And I hope to install her, her box encompassing all of it, right? So you take a corner, like right there, you see in the corner how it's got the honey in the corner, and then a bunch of empty cells. Let's just make sure they are empty. Yeah, there's some larva there and some nectar, so that's not really what I want. Same with this corner. I want one with no nectar so that she can feel free to, to lay in it. And you can see this one's got honey and pollen. So it's less than ideal. I'm going to remove this burr comb because I'm driving people nuts by not removing it. And I really should remove it. I say I'm going to remove it all the time and then I never do. I'm also going to eliminate anything that I think is a queen cell as well. So I'm going to leave this frame out for now just so that i got a bit of room to work with. You can see the bees are really taking to the queen, eh? I just want to observe whether they're calm and happy with her or whether they're violent. Have a look for yourself right now. They're already all over her. So, I mean, it, it may tell you whether or not they feel like they're ready for a new queen because they have been queenless for quite a while but they've also had a worker laying drone, drone eggs for quite a while as well. So, so far, I think that's a pretty good response. Like, I'm not hearing any, any of the, the cries or screams that I have heard some queen bees do when they're in distress. But again, hard for me to know because I'm new at it. So I'm just going by what I've received as, uh, as advice from others, along with a lot of really good YouTube videos on the subject matter. Okay, let's see about this frame. And this frame has just too much honey in it. I guess I could set her down in this right-hand corner. There's a lot of empty frames there. Yeah, this, this side might be better. So I'll keep an eye on this one. This might be the right frame. But I really want a frame that is completely empty of nectar. I just want it to have honey in the corners and then just open, open cells to be able to, uh, to have her lay right away. This one's completely empty. That's one that I extracted. They haven't laid in that, so that's good, I think. At some point they say that the worker, uh, that the laying worker gets tired of laying or stops laying, realizes it's not really benefiting the hive, and they stop. I may or may not be at that point because I haven't seen much fresh larva. Well, you can see these, these guys are hatching out workers as we speak, eh? Can you see them coming out right there in the middle? So that's my dog bumping the camera. And not a frame that I want to deal with. So I'll work back here a couple more frames and see if I can one find one that's ideal. All the while I'm keeping an eye on the queen there. I mean they're still all over her. Hard to tell whether they're being mean and aggressive or they're just being inquisitive to be honest with you. But. Again, that's the beauty of the cage release method, is that um, you embed it in the comb, they will get in there. They'll chew through, not the wire, but they'll chew through the comb and underneath and get in. But it'll take them a few days and hopefully by the time they do, they'll realize that she's a better queen than what they've got in there so far. So, still looking for the ideal frame to use. I haven't found it yet. If I come across any more supersedure cells or queen cells, of course, I'll get rid of them now. Now they have been making new queens here for weeks, but they haven't worked out for whatever reason. So here's another frame. And there's some empty cells here. There's some honey here. 
it's not too bad but again ideally I want something that's more empty than these so I'll check a couple more and then decide which one to use I'll move the queen over now, try not to upset her or the other bees too much. Now, I hope these bees don't get nasty today because I have not lit my smoker. And I know that's a big mistake. Uh, I've been told off for not lighting it before. But I'm living on the edge. Uh, look at all this drone cone, very ugly looking. Get rid of this burr comb again. Sorry, buddy. kicking the camera sorry about that I've got the tripod in a different position because it's late afternoon and and uh, this is probably the best Sun angle for you to see the video with this is probably going to be the last frame I pull because uh, the next frame is completely honey bound you can see that from here so I won't bother pulling that end frame out So as I say, like there's still a lot of bees in this hive, and that's why I don't want to I don't want to shake them all off. Now this is the perfect frame that I'm looking for, I think. So this one does have some nectar in it, but this side is great. This side has a little bit of nectar, but it's got a lot of pollen and a lot of empty cells for her to lay in. So this is the side I'm going to put her in. I'm going to put her in. I want to put her up high because um, because it's easier for her to keep warm, right? But I think this is the area where I'm going to need to go, right around here. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to try and set her up right around here. So I'm going to shake the bees off this one. Then I'm going to have to somehow get the bees off the, uh, off the queen cell, which I didn't really account for when I was thinking about letting them interact with the queen. But we'll see how she goes. I don't want to trap any bees. Where I, uh, I put the wire box, right? We're going to put the wire box. It's a little lopsided, so I'm hoping that once I get the queen in there and release her her little release button, that I will be able to uh, push the mesh in and it will stay basically ingrained in the uh, in the wax. So let's see if I could grab this queen here without getting stung. Okay, so here she is, and I don't know, does it look like to you that they're welcoming her warmly or not? Hard to say. I mean, I don't hear her chirping, right? Which is supposedly a sign of distress. They're certainly interested in her. She has three attendants with her, I think, so that should help her out. But let's see. Time to get her in her cage. 
and get the cage in the in the box. Stay there, bees. So I've released her button there, so she should be ready to go as soon as I put her in. Again, as soon as I put her in, I plan on embedding the box so that uh, she is sealed. Okay, so the release was a sort of success. In my bumbling idiot ways, I lost two of her attendant bees, but she is in there, the queen is in there. She's in there, and hopefully they will get used to her and she'll start to work in that little sectioned off area. The bees will get at her, I have no doubt, but it'll hopefully take them a few days and by then, hopefully they've accepted her as a queen. I don't know though. I'm going to have to find out in a few days. If, uh, if there's anything that I would say about this method, it's prepare as much as you can. So, um, you know, I didn't do too badly, but when I, uh, when I went to install her, uh, an outside bee got in the cage. So in my panic to get that bee out, I let two of her, uh, of her attendant bees go by mistake. So hopefully they'll get back to her and continue to work from the outside in, but I really don't know. It's a, it's a best bet scenario as to whether this will work at all. So We'll just try and see. Like I said, it's really my second to last option because um, because I have to go away for a few days and I can't attend to her. So, if the bees reject her and continue with their laying drone, then I'll have to split the hive and, uh, and split it into my two other strong hives. So, now one thing that I'm doing now, just because it's not a real good seal, because I made the box myself and frankly did a crappy job at it, I'm just grabbing loose wax and building, up, building it up around the perimeter of the cage. I'll let you see this in a sec here. But I'm just building up the wax around her cage so that the bees just take a little longer to get into her. They will chew through this and they'll chew under the cage and get to the queen. But again, in the couple of days it takes them to do that, 
hopefully they will have accepted her by then. Well, they're starting to look for her, that's for sure. couple more pieces of wax and I'm done. I'll show you the finished product. You can laugh at it, as I probably would if I saw this in a video, but hopefully you can learn from it and do something better than I've done. The queen is definitely in there, so that's the most important and initial thing. And now the question is, will the hive take to her or not? I need one more little piece of wax that I'm looking for. Just to seal it out. Oh shoot, sorry about that. Just to seal it off. Here, I'll give you a look at what I've done. You see how I've just built up wax all around the cage? And you can see her in there, she's marked yellow. And those might be the two attendants that escaped. Hopefully they're trying to get back into her. You can see basically what I've done there. Now I'll slip this back in the hive and uh, give it a few, well, probably the better part of a week before I can get back. And hopefully the bees will accept her. If not, it's gonna be Splitsville for the hive. I'll have to split it and, uh, and this hive will have been deemed uh, not feasible. All right, so thanks for joining me. Uh, I'll give you another look at the contraption here as I put it in, hopefully it'll fit. I need to make some extra space for it. Again, you can buy these things. The reason why I'm making them is I just discovered out, I just discovered this method today, but no one was available to sell one to me, so I just made one. And again, it may or may not be ideal, may or may not work, but we'll see. That's my, uh, that's the way I chose to do it. So now we gotta see if it's gonna work. All right, so I'm gonna close up this hive and, uh, Hope that they like her and hope that they accept her and if that is the case in a few days then she will either they will either chew her out of that cage and I'll remove it or they'll chew their way into it and mix with her intermingle with her in which case I'll either way I'll, I'll remove the uh, I'll remove the uh, the cage for them to get back to normal operations all right so that's it. Thanks for joining me. It's Frank at 4D Honeybee, and uh, yeah, keep watching. I'll, I'll let you know how this goes. Last year, I had the same thing happen. I had one hive that struggled badly and, um, and went queenless, and I really didn't do much at all to it. I let nature take its course, and the hive was dead by October, November. So this year, I've taken a few steps to intervene. And this is the most drastic so far by requeening. I've never done that before. So hopefully it means the hive survives. There's a lot of bees. As you can see, this box is overflowing. And there's a second box that I'm about to put on now, too. That's pretty well as well. So thanks for joining me. We'll let you know what happens.